This is Pathology, Chapter 4, Part 3. Human Immunodeficiency Virus, or HIV, and Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, or AIDS. HIV is transmitted by sexual contact with an infected person, by contact with infected blood and blood products, and from infected mothers to their infants. The virus infects cells of the immune system, particularly the CD4 T helper lymphocytes. This type of lymphocyte participates in cell-mediated medi immunity and in regulating the immune response. Many individuals experience an acute disease shortly after infection with HIV, but others are asymptomatic. Infected individuals may not have any signs or symptoms of disease for some time, but in most, most patients a progressive immunodeficiency develops. As the immune system becomes deficient, life-threatening opportunistic infections and cancers occur. The current definition of AIDS includes HIV infection with severe CD4 lymphocyte depletion. Fewer than 200 CD4 lymphocytes per microliter of blood. The normal level is between 550 and 1000. Two antibody tests are used to determine whether a person is infected. The ELISA or enzyme-linked immunoabsorbent assay is used first. When this test is positive twice, it is followed by the Western blot test. Clinical Manifestations of AIDS An initial infection may be asymptomatic. Some people may develop lymphadenopathy. Others may develop an acute illness resembling mononucleosis. After an acute illness, some individuals may have persistent lymphadenopathy. Many become completely asymptomatic. The virus infects cells of the immune system. In time, the immune system becomes deficient. AIDS-related complex is the occurrence of several signs and symptoms together. Oral candidiasis, fatigue, weight loss, and lymphadenopathy. Clinical manifestations of AIDS. Antibodies to HIV usually begin to become detectable about six weeks after infection. In some people, antibodies may not be detectable for six months or up to a year or longer. This is called the window of infectivity. The spectrum of HIV infection includes everything from an asymptomatic infection to full-blown AIDS. HIV is human immunodeficiency virus. AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Clinical manifestations of AIDS. See figure 4-32 on page 133 for more information on this image. Tests for PCR are used to measure the amount of HIV circulating in serum. The measured amount is called the viral load. Measurement of the viral load along with the CD4 lymphocyte count is used to assess HIV infection. HIV infection is managed with combinations of antiretroviral drugs and drugs to treat opportunistic infections. 
Oral Manifestations of AIDS Many oral lesions are associated with patients with HIV infection and AIDS. Some lesions indicate developing immunodeficiency and predict AIDS in patients who are HIV positive. Oral lesions develop because of deficiency in cell-mediated immunity and depletion of T helper cells. Oral lesions include opportunistic infections, tumors, and autoimmune-like diseases. The oral manifestations of AIDS include oral candidiasis, herpes simplex, herpes zoster, hairy leukoplakia, HPV infections, Kaposi sarcoma, lymphoma, gingival and periodontal disease, spontaneous gingival bleeding, aphthous ulcers, salivary gland disease, and mucosal melanin pigmentation. Oral candidiasis, also known as thrush, can be seen in this image on the right. The treatment includes antifungal medications. Recurrence is common. In HIV patients, it generally signals the beginning of progressively severe immunodeficiency. Herpes simplex infection is an ulceration resulting from herpes simplex that has been present for more than one month. This helps to meet the criteria for the diagnosis of AIDS. Herpes zoster generally follows the usual pattern when it occurs in a person who is HIV positive. In the facial and oral area, the lesions follow branches of the trigeminal nerve. It is a sign of developing immunodeficiency. Hairy leukoplakia is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. It is a predictor of AIDS in HIV-positive individuals. Chronic tongue chewing and hyperplastic candidiasis can produce a similar lesion. There is no treatment indicated. Human papillomavirus infections are also associated with HIV infection. They may have a normal color or be erythematous. They may be associated with treatment with antiretroviral agents. Kaposi sarcoma is an opportunistic neoplasm that may occur in patients with HIV infection. It is most commonly located on the palate and gingiva. Diagnosis is made by biopsy. It is treated with surgical excision, radiation treatment, and chemotherapy. Lymphoma is a malignant tumor that may occur in association with HIV infection. It appears as a non-ulcerated necrotic or ulcerated mass. It may be surfaced by ulcerated or normal colored erythematous mucosa. The diagnosis is made by biopsy and histologic examination. It is treated with chem chemotherapeutic drugs. Gingival and periodontal disease. Unusual forms of gingival and periodontal disease may develop in patients with HIV, such as linear gingival erythema, or LGE, and necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis, or NUP. LGE has three characteristic features, spontaneous bleeding, punctate or petechiae-like lesions on attached gingiva and alveolar mucosa, plus a band-like erythema of the gingiva that does not respond to therapy. LGE occurs independently of oral hygiene status. 
NUP is characterized by intense erythema and extremely rapid bone loss. Necrotizing stomatitis is extensive focal areas of bone loss along with features of NUP. Treatment for gingival and periodontal diseases includes scaling, root planing, soft tissue curatage, intrasulcular lavage, chlorhexidine mouth rinse, and systemic metronidazole. Spontaneous gingival bleeding. A decrease in platelets may occasionally be seen in patients with HIV. It may be due to an autoimmune type of thrombocytopenic purpura. In these patients, a platelet count and bleeding time should be considered before deep scaling procedures. Abscess ulcers. There appears to be an increase in the number of these ulcers in patients with HIV infection. Ulcers resembling major abscess ulcers appear as deep, persistent, painful ulcers. They do respond to steroids. Salivary gland disease. Bilateral parotid gland enlargement may occur in patients who are HIV positive. It may be related to medication or salivary gland disease. Macular areas of melanin pigmentation may occur in patients with HIV infection. The cause for this is unclear. Discussion questions with your instructor follow. This concludes Pathology, Chapter 4, Part 3.